In this video, we will use Python and VS Code to deploy MySQL Cloud Database on Avon. Let's go. All right, guys, so this is an intermediate level tutorial. You should have some familiarity with Python and SQL, and we need Python installed and MySQL installed on our computer. After that, we need an Avon account. Avon is a cloud database service, so you can create an account at avon.io. You can just click on this get started for free button up here. I already have an account, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And when you log in, you'll be taken to your dashboard and your dashboard will look essentially like this, except you won't have this instance of MySQL running here like I do. So we need to create that first. So we can do that with create service here at the top right. Just select MySQL from this list of options and then select the free plan and then you'll be given the option to create that free plan. Once you do that, you'll have an instance of MySQL running just like there is here. You can click on that and that will show you all of your connection details. And so these are all the details that we need to connect. All right, so let's go ahead and connect. I'm using MySQL shell, which comes with the full installation of MySQL. Uh, the full installation also comes with MySQL Workbench, which I'll use at the end of this tutorial a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch to SQL here with backslash SQL, and then let's connect with backslash connect. And we're gonna pass in the credentials on the right in the following format. We'll say user password at host port, All right? Just like that. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab user colon password at host and then port is 11460. Okay, and that's it. Now we're connected to Avon. All right, so now we can go ahead and start running commands. Avon gives us already some databases to start working with right out of the box. So we can see those. We can ask it to show us the databases. We'll just say show databases. And there are the databases in Avon already. And we could actually use one of these. Say we wanted to use that that's Aquila database. And then we can ask it to show us the tables in that database. And there's the tables. We could even select everything from one of those tables. Just pick the first one, actor, and there's all that data, okay? Okay, so um, we want to create our own database. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do that with, again, Python in VS Code. So I'm gonna bring up VS Code. And I already have some SQL scripts ready to go. Um, we're gonna need some SQL to run against the server to create the database, create the table in the database, and then populate the table with data. So insert data. So I already have those two SQL scripts. We're gonna create a Python file to actually create the database. And this is housing data from Zillow. And I have another video where I show how I created these SQL scripts from a CSV file, a data set that I downloaded from Zillow. So you're welcome to watch that video if you like. So let's go ahead and open Git Bash and create a Python file here. We're going to call it execute scripts. Okay. And we are going to need a package called MySQL Connector. So let's check our package manager, pip list, and this MySQL Connector Python package. So if you don't have that installed, go ahead and run uh, pip install MySQL Connector Python. All right and that should install that package, and we're ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and import um, our, our package first, the MySQL connector. So let's go import mysql.connector, and, and then also we will import an error 
from MySQL connector so we can manage our, handle our errors. So we'll say from mysql.connector import, import error, okay. And now we can start writing our main function. And we'll create a try accept block. And then here we'll say error if we get an error. And we'll handle that as E. And then we will print an error if it happens. We'll just say error. Okay. And then pass in that error. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a connection. So we'll say connection. Connection is, and then we'll call on that mysql.connector and we'll say dot connect. And then we are going to give it, again, the connection details on the right here from Avon. So we're telling it to connect, and this is parentheses. We're telling it to connect, and so we're giving it the details it needs to know what to connect to, right? So we're gonna say host, and I'm just gonna pass these in as variables, and we'll go back in a second to define each one of these. And then we're gonna say password, Right, user, and then what is it? Ports. We need ports. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead now and define each one of these. So we'll say host is, and let's bring over this host, and then ports. It doesn't matter what order you put these in, right? And then user user and then what's left password okay password all right <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and test this connection so we'll say if connection dot is connected then let's print connected to my SQL server, okay? <clears throat> All right, so now that we're connected, we can go ahead and start executing commands. To do that, we're gonna need to create a cursor. So we'll say cursor equal to connection.cursor. And then let's just go ahead and say cursor.execute and let's execute our first SQL command which is to create the database. So we'll say create database if not exists. And then let's give it the database name, database name. And we can go ahead and get rid of this. We don't need the, those details anymore. And let's go ahead and define this. And then let's fix this password here. Let's go ahead and define this database name. Let's just call it um, housing data. Okay. So the database will be named housing data. All right. Now, what else do we need to do? Now let's connect to that database. So we'll say connection.database and just give it the database name. So that'll connect to that database. And now we can start to execute the scripts. So we're going to do that with the use of a function. And so here we'll just name the function. We'll say execute, execute SQL script. And this function is gonna take in the connection and then it's gonna take in the path to the file. So let's start with the first one, create table. We'll call that create table script. And then let's copy this down. We're gonna create another one for the insert data script. So we'll call this insert data script. And then let's go ahead and define each one of these. So again, this is just gonna be the path to the file. So we'll just say create table.sql. Let's copy this down. And then another one for insert data script. And this is insert data, right? Okay, great. Okay, now let's go ahead and create this function. 
So we'll say execute SQL script. Again, this is taking in a connection and the script path. All right. And again, let's create a try accept block. Here we'll use an exception as E. And if this fails, then we'll print, you know, failed to execute, execute script and just give it the script path. All right. Okay. So now what we need to do is first open that file, right? So we'll say with open, and this opens that file. We'll give it the script path, and then we'll say r for read because we're gonna be reading this file, and we'll call this file. So we'll say as file. And now what we need to do is load this file. We need to actually read this file. So we'll load it into this variable, we'll call it SQL script and we'll say file.read. So we're reading that file into SQL script. All right. Now we need to loop over the file and grab every SQL statement in there. Now in SQL, each statement is separated by a semicolon, right? here. So we're going to separate it by semicolon. So what we're going to say is we're going to say for statement in SQL script dot split. And then we're going to tell it what to split it at. In this case, a semicolon. And then what we need to do is check that every statement has something in it. In other words, that we're not trying to run an empty statement. And we're gonna do that with a strip. So we, a strip will remove any empty space from either side of the statement. So if there's anything in there, it will resolve to true and the statement, then we can go ahead and execute it. So we'll say if statement.strip, okay then we can go ahead and start executing this the statement so again we're going to need a cursor so let's go ahead and say cursor is connection dot cursor and then we'll say cursor dot execute statement all right. all right and then if that goes well let's go ahead and print actually first before we print any success message we need to commit this connection. So we'll say connection.commit. And now we can say print. And let's do another string. Um, successfully executed, executed script. And give it the script path. Okay, cool. All right, so this should do it. Let's see, we have our connection details. All of that looks fine. And okay, now we need to finish up here. So if everything goes well, then at the end, we will close the connection. So we'll say finally, if connection dot is connected, then connection dot close. And then we'll just print closed connection. So let's say closed connection to my SQL server. And then we'll set up our main guard here. We'll say if name is, sorry, is main, then execute main. And this basically allows us to execute this file as a standalone. So we can just run it in the terminal. Okay, so just double check here, make sure everything looks good. All right, so again, let's go back to our shell and let's take a look here, see where were we? Okay, so remember 
our databases included these databases here. So we're looking to see that housing database now added, right? So once we run this, we should have that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just go Python, execute scripts. Okay, all right. So now it's taking some time. We're just waiting for those insert statements to run. So this is gonna take a minute. All right, so we got a success message for the insert statements. It looks like everything ran well. So let's go back to our shell. And now let's ask it again for the list of databases. And we should see that housing data database in there. So let's say show databases. And there's that housing data database. And so now let's go ahead and just use that database. Use housing data, and then we can. And then now let's show the tables, and we can see there's that housing data table in there. So let's go ahead and select everything from housing data, and there it is. There's all our data. All right. So we were successfully able to run those scripts, and now they're in Aven. And so this is kind of crazy if you'd like to retain your sanity we can open mysql workbench and i already have workbench open and sorry i feel like i'm kind of just jumping into workbench here but it's basically the same data like it's the same connection so we're seeing the databases that are in there so when i refresh this we should see the housing data database in there so there's that so same thing we can just say use housing data Oop housing data and now we can ask it to select everything from housing data again I missed that a all right so now we can see it's fetching the data here so it's gonna take a second and then we'll see it a little bit more orderly all right guys so I hope that was helpful if it was, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.